Hello YouTube! Welcome to Captain Dave's Sport Fishing YouTube channel, Jacksonville, Florida. I have been hesitant to do a video discussing, not really reviewing, but I mean, you can call it a review, a new reel that I have. I don't know, you may have seen it in some of my other videos. We're out catching the bull reds. All right, here we are, the brand new tsunami, tsunami rods. Putting a little action in them. Any foul guides, nothing fancy. Got the brand new Shimano Dakota 500 on there. Pulling in a, hopefully a big RB. Brutus T, red bass. So I figured right now, since a tropical storm the size of Florida is off of our coast, right now, with the center going to be hitting South Florida as a possible Category 1, and the way it looks is that the entire weather is ruined of course, for uh, the next few days. Today is election day. I hope everybody went out and voted. I bought these reels weeks and weeks ago. And the reason I really wasn't wanting to maybe do anything about them is because they're not cheap. They're not cheap. What do I do? I get tons of comments and questions about all the cheaper tackle. Ugly sticks, of course, everybody asks questions about ugly sticks. And they ask about the Triton. They're not really called the Triton anymore. They're a Shimano TR-100G. The 100 size is all anybody really needs. Unless you're a cat fisherman or something, and then you think you need all this line capacity. But you don't. You really don't. 100s? That's all I use. I used to have some 200s, and I was like, eh, these things are too big. These can still be purchased. This is like a brand new one. These can still be purchased. <laughs> I mean, I remember my first one was like $44. Now they're like $94 or something. So this is my favorite reel of all time because it just can do everything. People ask me all the time, can I use it for surf casting? Can I do this? It's not really a big time casting reel since it doesn't have anything except one bearing right here inside the handle. That's it. On the newer ones, it has a bronze bushing. So that's more reliable, but you get some of the older ones on eBay that say GT. They have, back in the day, they had maybe a little bit bigger main gear they did have a bearing on the inside of the spool. Some of them had a little higher gear ratio, 5.1, uh, 5 point, you know, five, five to one to one gear ratio. Where, you know, you go buy a brand new one today and it's a 4.3 to one. And you only have the one bearing there and it's got bushings. So that's the reason why I've always loved these is because they're just pretty much the most bulletproof reel you could ever get in salt water. It can't corrode. It can't do anything. So what did I buy <coughs> that I've been using and I've been holding back from y'all? You may have noticed them. And that is the brand spanking new let me get my strong arm rig out of the way here. Brand new Shimano Dakota 500. They're not new. They've been out for a couple years, but they're really new to me. And the reason I was holding back 
is because really the cheapest you'll ever find these reels is about, I got really lucky. Uh, let's see, down from South Florida, I think they came. 194 bucks delivered. These are kind of a far cry from these, from the, what I call the Tritons. They're, a, they're almost the same thing, but modernized, just like the round Dakotas were. The ones prior to these were round. And I have to say, I owned several, and I did not find them very corrosion resistant. Corrosion resistant and obtrusive are the things that I don't like in reels. If a reel is kind of too big, uh, I don't like them. And these are basically the same size. What they're doing is Shimano kind of is going the way, which I kind of like. It was with the, you know, how they stepped up the Corrado. They went to the Corrado EJ. Okay, and it had this same type of handle on it, a big power handle. It was really high speed, but it was on the low profile kind of chassis, I guess you could say, framework. And then they went to the Tranex. Oh my God. As they claimed it was the, the Tranex 500. They claimed, and it was built basically on the, I can't remember, started with a T. Not the Torium. Something else. It was built on that, that gearing and everything. And they made the Tranex 500, the world's largest low profile reel ever made. And of course I had two of them. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, I changed reels like, you know, changing socks. I mean, it's just here today, gone tomorrow. I try them out, I get rid of them, I sell them, I buy something else. These, of course, you can see the teardrop shape. And when I got the first one, or the, I don't buy nothing in ones, so I bought the first two. Uh, I was a little skeptical, you know, that there were going to be, I don't know. I have, I've had some bad luck with painted reels. See, this isn't painted. This is just black graphite. This is all aluminum framing and everything here. It's probably got their whatever side plate. I don't know. I guess maybe the side plate's aluminum. I haven't really taken them apart or anything. But I've had some bad luck with charter customers slathered in sunscreen. The Daiwa Lexa Iowa Alexa 300s. I had six of them. And what I didn't like is after a while of cupping it and palming it. And this is the only thing I can think of. And I heard somebody else on YouTube discuss it also. Is that painted reels and sunscreen don't go together. And I literally had paint peeling off the top on a Daiwa, Lexa. That's a, that's a damn expensive reel. They're ex as much as these or more. I really got disheartened. I mean, I love Daiwas, love Daiwas, which I believe you didn't have to flick the button up. I believe even on the 300s, I'm remembering you can push the lever back, turn the handle, and it auto-engaged. That's another thing that I look for that these don't have. This doesn't have. But I will over 
I will overlook that for other things. Like these are 6.3 to 1 gear ratio. I got these specifically for heavy duty bottom fishing. Bull reds, bottom fishing, whatever. Drum, I don't care what it is. That's why I got these. And I even said to a customer who was reeling in, um, I don't know, 20 pound redfish. I said to him, you know, these got real, these are really fast and he's pulling them in and he knew how to fish. So he's pulling back and he goes, one, 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 two, three. And he goes, yeah, these things are quick. So that quickness makes it a bit smoother of a fight, you know, a battle with a big fish than these do. Plus, he's got the small handles. You can go and put a Calcutta 400 power handle on these, but let me tell you something. There's something, there was something amiss because I did that. I had power handles for about six of these, and they were all the Calcutta 400s. That's where the power handle came from. I ordered them straight from Shimano. And the aluminum that the handle was made from was very, it had an anodization on it, but they were very kind of cheaply made. And this is on a Calcutta. You're paying big money for that Calcutta. You're paying 200 up for even the smallest Calcutta brand new. And right here where the nut goes on, same nut, same everything right here, the anodization was just peeling back and I'd take the cap off and all the anodization was all corroded and nasty. So I went back to the stainless and to the small handles because that's what it's ma made for. It's OEM. These reels were designed with this little handle because this little handle is a do-all kind of handle on this reel. For kids, women, men, it don't matter. This handle works. So I went back. I got a few still left with the, with the power handle on them. But this power handle really, really is nice. I don't know. I think it's ball bearings in there. It doesn't spin super it don't spin like some of the reels that I have with ball bearing handles. But another thing that Shimano is sort of doing, they did it with the newer Calcutta, I think. Uh, you know, they're going to these little small star drags. Little small, and it clicks. And, you know, for me... It really works out that that clicks because the wind is howling 90% of the time I'm fishing. I got customers that I don't even know truly if they know what drag is, what, the, what a drag setting is. I'm not sure because I don't do interviews with these people, you know, and nobody tells me anything. So I have to ask and a lot of times they don't. So as they're fighting a fish, I can come in here and go tick, tick, tick just a couple times. And I know that's just another half pound of drag that I'm giving them where I'm not take, giving them too much. So the big deal on these would be, is this paint finish going to stay? I've got them loaded up with 30 pound braid, not all the way to the spool. I do have a little mono down the bottom just because 30 pound braid, these things are holding what, 500 yards or something? I mean, I don't need that kind of line. So I'm going to save some of the braid. They don't tick on this, on the, on the spool centering here. They don't tick there. Uh, the, you know, the, the lever here. Shimano's gotten completely away from giving you metal. 
I can't say that that's metal. I don't think so. I doubt that's metal. See, it's got a different sound. I believe this is metal here. That's not. It's kind of a duller sound. All right, so. Well, either way, I've got set after set after set of these right now. I went ahead and really went all the way because when I got the two, they really worked great. And I'll show you if you didn't if you didn't see it before how I made these big fish bottom fishing setups. How did I make these very affordable? I put my money in the reels. Because, you know, when it really gets down to it, the rod doesn't matter that much. Okay, you're bottom fishing. So, I went, and you I talked about this before. These are two to six ounce tsunami. <laughs> I don't, I never thought that I'd own a tsunami rod. A Bimini Bay, Tsunami. I never thought I'd even own one. But I was at my local bait shop one day. I don't know why I was in there. I was just, I don't know. I was inquiring about something or bait or something. And I walked by, you know, they got some of those turning rod holders. And I always look and I saw these. And I mean, these things are thick. I've got stars that are exactly like this. E-glass blanks with the stainless steel anti-foul guides. And we're bottom fishing. So we're, we're, we're not super finesse fishing. These got foam grips, right? Not a big, thick foam grip. They got a gimbal on the end of the butt here. Now that's what my stars don't have. My stars just got a big cap, a big rubber cushiony kind of cap. No fancy reel seat. They're, I mean, if you can hear them, I mean, they're thick, but they're actually called backwaters, backwater rods. So I bought these two. They had two of them. And I turned to the owner's son and I said, what's this? You got two? How did you get two of these? And he's like, yeah, I don't know, you know, but I mean, you know, if we got more of them, we'd, you know, I guarantee we'd sell them. And I'd say, yeah, yeah. Because you know how much they were? $48.99 or $49.99. They were inexpensive. Inexpensive. And they will do the job. And they... <laughs> they handle the weight that we use around here for bottom fishing. Better, a little better than my stars. They've got... This is, this is going to be difficult to show you. But they've got a little bit of a flex to them. They've got a faster taper tip than my star rods, which I stereotypically would be using for 100 pound black tip sharks. So, and they've got a lot of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a tip. I was so impressed with a rod that will handle two to six ounces without even thinking about it. And a giant fish, I mean, as big a fish as, you know, we could ever hook in the St. John's River or at, the, at the inlet in the fall and winter and stuff when I do a lot of bottom fishing, these can handle it. And I came home 
and I did a massive internet search for a tsunami <laughs> backwater TSB WBC 701H seven foot line line 25 to 50 lure weight sink or sinker weight two to six ounces. This is what I was looking for because this guide right here is going to be tougher than the ugly stick, ugly tough guide. Well, this is an ugly stick striper rod that has seen its hours. Now check that shit out. That one's growing some, uh, some hedges. These are going to be tougher. And they just will be. I mean, the ugly stick, ugly tough guides got to stay on top of them because of the fact that they really get corroded. Not the greatest stainless steel in the world by any means. And I guarantee these aren't either. But these are going to be like almost easier to maintain and keep clean. That's any foul guides. Some of you are probably young enough that you look at this and you don't even really know what these, the history of these guides. The history of these guides are for kind of beater meat sticks. Commonly, the old party boats would run rods with any foul guide. The reason they call them any foul is line falls off of them, right? Because see that angle right there? That's the only thing that I know of. They're, they're, they're called anti-foul. Some people call them snake guides and all this. But really, snake guides are more on fly rods. Because they go along and then they go, whoop, and then straight again. So I got basically a $195 reel on a $49 rod. The braid that I got this filled up with if I went to Billy Bob's uh, sporting goods store and bought the amount of braid that it takes to fill these, cost more than this rod. So if you're, if you're interested in a super beater working rod, because that's what I'm doing with it. These are working rods I could hand anybody. Now, yes, they're heavy. They're relatively heavy. They're not going to be some little fairy wand. The, the reels are light, but these are kind of rods that in my boat, the intention is, is the only time you're really picking it up is to kind of feel and set the hook because this sits in the rod holder. This kind of rod sits in the rod holder with the, with the gimbal. But if you're really interested in a rod like this, um, I was told by the you know, chief of sales, I guess his name, his name was Chris, at Tsunami in New Jersey that they had 218 of these. And at one point I said to him, so what's it take for me to buy 50? I asked him, do these come in a medium action? Because this is a heavy action. And he's like, no, we made these and that's it. And, you know, they're not in any, any stores or anything because they just didn't sell. And I said to him, it's because you weren't selling them to the right people. That's the problem. I mean, at my, my bait shop, they said, we could sell these all day long. I mean, they had them on the rack for like three days until I walked in and went, oh, I'll take them. You know, the alternative to this rod would be a heavy action tiger. Ugly stick tiger. A heavy action. Well, I got like, you know, 25 damn tigers. I wanted to try something else. So I went ahead, went to these tsunami rods. And for the price, here's what he even did. When I bought them from tsunami themselves... He even said, I'll send them to you via our warehouse in Florida. So they came 
in boxes, wrapped up in a box that was in a box. I have not had one single issue with these rods. I really, really love these rods. Isn't it funny? I love utility stuff that can handle multiple tasks. There you go. I bottom fish them with these. I float rig fish with these. I am extremely happy with these so far, these Shimano Dakota 500s. I will be highly paying attention to the paint finish to see if anything happens with the, the hands that I get. All right. The corrosion resistance of them. I don't believe much can happen to them. They got the all these drain holes built into them. I mean, they got a drain hole in the bottom. They got a drain hole right here. So I don't know if they're expecting them to get filled full of water or what. But the gear ratio, the small little non-obtrusive star drag, the big power handle, and the palm ability. Because this is how I fish it. I stick my hand here and I'm fishing like this and then 90% of the time after I'm doing my business here, boom, 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 okay, I'm on the bottom, boom, into the rod holder it goes. So that is sort of right now my concentration has been lately bottom fishing. Maybe a hundred dollars now, or you pick them up used, and that's always super pot luck. Pot luck, oh my god, buying these used off of somebody on eBay. And for some reason, they're very, very, very popular in the Great Lakes areas and the West Coast. This isn't a new reel for Shimano, but it's a new reel for me. I'm just wanting to show you that it really works out. Me personally, I'm going to put my money in the reel. I'm not going to put my money in the rod as much because I'm just bottom fishing with these. You can use these for king mackerel trolling. You can use these for a lot of things. For me, I'm using them for bottom fishing. And on these uh, tsunami backwaters, I could not be happier. It's so funny. When, it, when he said, we got 218 of them, how many do you want? I mean, I'm like, uh, 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 I'll take four. And then I talked to him. It took quite a while to get these. I don't know. All that intercompany bureaucracy is what he had to go through. And at one point, I was getting a little irritated. The last time I talked to him, I said, are you going to sell me these rods or not? And I'm still sitting thinking to myself, so what are you going to do with 200 rods? 218 rods. Or now that I bought, I got four of them off of them. You know, what are you going to do with all these rods? That's the question. What are you doing with all of them? Are they somehow going to find their way into a bargain bin at Wally's World or something? I don't know. So there you go. That's just a little bit of a story and stuff. The wind is howling. And I got a tree. I'm waiting for trees to fall. Oh, oh man, the weather. So there you go. When I got the right kind of tackle for me, what I deem the right tackle for the job, it makes me want to do it more. It makes me want to go out and do more bottom fishing. I want to, I want to hook more bull reds. There you go. Not much else to talk about other than I might be losing $1,300 because of this weather coming up between Friday and Sunday. Oh, well, mamas don't let your babies grow up to be fishermen or charter fishermen. 
So there you go. If you're in the need, post your comments below, your questions below, any kind of contact information or anything you need, just let me know and I'll, I'll answer any questions or whatever. These rods aren't, and I know what that Chris meant by when he said these didn't sell because these aren't what people envision, you know. Oh, I need the lightest, you know, super graphite, this, that, with a taper, you know, and I need the cork, and I need the, the trigger, and I need this, and I want the Fuji super something or other K guides, and the this, and the that. That's the reason why they didn't sell. Because they're just rods out to do work. So... That's the reason they don't sell to the average weekend guy. He ain't looking for anything like this. You know, he's looking for fancy. I'll see you on the next one. I've been rambling too long. Don't forget, ask your questions in the comment section below. See ya.